Finally, hypnosis. I happen to think hypnosis is one of the most profound ways to treat pain. I think it's underutilized. If pain is a cognitive thing, a perception, then manipulating cognitive sets should work, and I think it can. And it's very different, by the way. Hypnotic analgesia, which works, is not reversed by naloxone. Clearly doesn't involve the endorphins. As a little aside, how many people think when you go jogging and you feel good, it's endorphins? Few people. There's no evidence for that. All right? How would we test it? Naloxone. I'm waiting to do that experiment to the people in my lab who leave the lab at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and go for a run and say, I got a jogger's high. Give them naloxone. If they never run again, then it's endorphins. Anyway. <laughs> Here is that area I showed you. Here's the pain, the anterior cingulate gyrus. This is the unpleasantness correlate. Very high. This is the sensory discriminative. Now you hypnotize the subjects. Beautiful study published in science so that it's no longer unpleasant. What happens? That activity pretty much disappears, but the activity in the sensory part of the brain doesn't, stays the same. In other words, the information got to the brain, but the perception was altered. What a wonderful way to treat pain. How does it work? I don't know. But it illustrates so strongly that pain is much more than a stimulus, and you've got to use everything you can to regulate it. So by summarizing, I'll just leave you with this. Here's the pathway. It's more complex. I didn't go into all the details. The information gets to the brain. That we know about. It's not just a pain pathway. It's a modifiable pathway that changes in the setting of injury. You can treat by targeting changes in the nerve in the skin. You can pour drugs at the cord, and morphine is just one of them. But don't forget that pain's a perception, and you can manipulate the brain. All right? And I'll end by reading you some. I, I got into this. The students, it started as a joke. I wrote all these stupid poems for my lectures. I'll read you one. The bane of pain is plainly in the brain. Now, pain is an intricate potion of sensations, cognitions, emotions. Acute pain may be terrible, and when chronic, unbearable not something that you treat with mere lotions. But although pain may not be easy to bear, there's a reason for pain being there. It's critical to know, lest a cancer unbeknownst grow, pain signals a need for repair. You learned of children with congenital and sensitivity to pain, they're unaware if they have fractures or sprains. These children are rare, but they need constant care, or their injuries will not be contained. The small fibers you learned are essential to establish a painful potential, but shake your hand or vibrate, and you may close the gate so that the pain is no longer sequential. <laughs> was this known to that student of pain? The Marquis de Sade was his name. His charisma, it gripped you as he smilingly whipped you, and the pain could just drive you insane. The good news is that there are myriad ways to control pain, which is perhaps why cutting the cords on the wane. Find out what the morphine dose is, even consider hypnosis. Remember, pain's a complex product of the brain. In this regard, find a pregnant woman and ask her, is Lamaze merely a ploy to distract her? Or when labor pain is not perceived by the brain, are endorphins a relevant factor? Now, of course, endorphins, there are numerous classes. Some, reportedly, are as potent as grasses. <laughs> so if you're in pain, just depend on your brain because your endorphins are the true opiates of the masses. Thank Quite you very exciting, much. based exactly on, on looking at the genetics of pain, transferring it into the clinic, developing a new drug. Very exciting, I'm really optimistic. Yes? The question was, I did go through the hypnosis quickly, I was worried about time. Uh, I'll tell you one other hypnosis story um, that will help. Hypno hypnosis is not a placebo, and I say that because it's not reversed by naloxone. All right? It's very different. And placebos, we think, block the, the information flow to the brain. In the case of hypnosis, I think the information gets to the brain and it's altered. How do I know that? Let me tell you from partly that, that, that study, but an older study by Hilgard at Stanford. Bizarre study, let me tell you about it. He was a, a psychologist, wrote the classic textbook of psychology, hypnotist who studied pain. Here's the experiment. Subject is sitting there, they have a blood pressure cuff on, you don't completely paralyze the arm and you get him to exercise or put it into ice water. Let me tell you, that's excruciatingly painful. All right, ischemic pain is real bad. So now this patient, this individual subject saying, yeah, does that hurt? Oh, yeah, it's really, or, or, of course it hurts. Terrible, okay, then you hypnotize them. You hypnotize them in the same way so that 
it's not unpleasant. And 80% of people are hypnotizable. So you could change it so they don't even feel the unpleasantness of that situation. Oh, that's right. You hypnotize them and you ask them, how do you feel? And they say, I'm fine. It's fine. So it's working. The hypnotic analgesia work. Everything's great. No, it's not unpleasant. You sure it feels, oh no, no, it feels like warm, tepid water. Great. Now you tap into the subconscious and you, and you use this, the hidden observer and you say, tell me what you're really feeling. And you use automatic writing to report and the hand starts writing, it hurts like hell, stop it, it's burning, it's just as bad as it was. I feel absolutely fine. Oh, I'm fine. It's terrible, terrible. You know, you just like split the brain, but it's bizarre, it's Twilight Zone type stuff, but what it tells me, I don't know how it works, but clearly the information got to the brain because the, the verbal report, I mean the, the hand report, said it still hurts. The verbal report said, I really completely screwed this up, I'm tired. I think you get the point. The information gets to the brain, the perception is altered, the, f the ultimate effect is that you can reduce pain by affecting the emotional component. By hypnosis, it's not placebo, it's not touched by, by, um, by naloxone. And by the way, placebo responders, they always say, here, look to your left, now look to your right. One of you three is a placebo responder. I don't know which one. It's about 35%. Hypnosis, about 80% of people are hypnotizable. I'm not. I tried. Didn't work. In the back. <laughs>